in their particular area of talent, but the George Caleb Bingham Academy of the Arts would also elevate their potential and make them connoisseurs of the arts for the rest of their lives. Thus, the Academy opened in the Independence, Missouri School District on June 15, 1997, with 54 students who had just completed their sophomore, junior, or senior years at Truman or William Christman High Schools. These students were linked together to form a new school from which they would graduate in four weeks. The George Caleb Bingham Academy of Arts introduced students to a variety of personalities from Retta and Jackson in Pump Boys and Dinettes to Mama Rose in Gypsy. The villainy of Richard III was suffered along with the triumphs of Joseph and his amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Students felt the rage of Levi and Toledo in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and they heard the beauty of music and level of talent and accomplishment of the Academy's music faculty in a recital. Students learned from a Pulitzer Prize winning author and a well-known actor. They saw poetry spring to life in Poetry Alive. They saw the works of Surratt, Wood, Hopper, Van Gogh, Renoir, and Monet in Chicago. The scholars made puppets, played Dixieland jazz, and learned to play classical guitar. They had an ice cream social at George Caleb Bingham's home and visited his grave. Some took field trips to see how string instruments and organs are made. Others visited art museums, a bookstore, or drew flowers at Powell Gardens. They tasted the arts in Kansas City and caught a glimpse of them in Chicago. It was four weeks in fine arts fast forward but with experiences to last forever. Pulitzer Prize winning author and former Independence resident Richard Rhodes introduced the students to the craft of creativity at the Academy's orientation. Becoming an accomplished artesian takes time and practice, he said, but the benefits are enormous. The creative work lives forever and brings rewards not only to the creator, but to all who view, hear, see, or read it. And the students this summer had the opportunity to do just that create their craft. For example, theater students made their own puppets, gave a Punch and Judy show, and presented a scene from Steel Magnolias. Honey, your father's about to drive us all crazy and make us pull our hair out. Oh, don't worry. He should be finished with his yard work soon. Well, I hope so. Well, you're not the only one concerned. My mama's about to throw a fit. She and daddy are fighting like cats and dogs. They're just anxious with so much going on. No, they're not. They just try to create as much tension in any possible situation. It's a creed they live by. They gained experience in team playing, memory development, self-discipline, and timing. The visual art students worked in a variety of media, from watercolor to sculpture and ceramics. They were able to explore and develop their skills. They took field trips to Nelson Atkins and Kemper Museums, and were able to develop their artistic techniques while visiting Powell Gardens. Creative writing students produced a portfolio of work, which included various genres throughout the summer. They developed personal essays, poems, stories, journalistic pieces, and reviews. They also published children's books. And their field trips took them several places, including Union Cemetery in Kansas City, where they discovered the grave of George Caleb Bingham. They brought back rubbings, and a little history of the area. Creative writing and theater students combined talents to participate in a Poetry Live presentation. Students could concentrate on vocal or instrumental music in a multifaceted music curriculum taught by professional performers. Solo study was included, but all music students sang in the academy choir and they all learned to play classical guitar. Ensembles performed at the Academy Ice Cream Social for parents, friends, and school district personnel, at a fine arts festival held for the community, and at graduation. A Dixieland jazz band also entertained at several events.
performed in a recital at the Music Arts Institute during the final week of the program. Both vocal and instrumental students participated and shared in their primary area of study during the program. And although the classes, four mornings a week, were a focal point, the students gathered together many times to attend theater performances, a faculty music recital, and a two-day trip to Chicago. No one was late for the 5 a.m. departure time to the Windy City. For many, it was a first-time flying experience, and Southwest Airlines delivered the group to Midway Airport. After check-in at the Palmer House, the group walked to the Chicago Art Institute. The famous lions greeted them, and the students were on their way inside to view Wood, Monet, Van Gogh, Renoir, and other artists. Students saw an evening performance of Ma Rainey's Black Bottom at the Goodman Theater. Before returning to Independence the next day, the group visited the Museum of Science and Industry after exploring some of Chicago. A couple hot summer nights provided the atmosphere for outdoor performances at Starlight Theater and Shakespeare in the Park. Joseph and his amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat and Richard III provided contrasts in drama. The dinner theater experience of Gypsy might have been new to many students. American Heartland's Pump Boys and Dinettes brought some student interaction, both during the performance and afterward when autographs were signed. And then it ended, almost too soon. A whirlwind of fine arts training and experiences were coming to a close but so much student creation had been shared. Graduation was all that was left. The 54 members of the first class of the George Caleb Bingham Academy of the Arts received their diplomas and bronze medals on July 11th at the Truman Presidential Library. Five Robert W. Watkins scholars were named, one in each of the five areas of art, creative writing, instrumental music, vocal music, and theater. But first, they were told to enjoy creating, and not to consider it work, by actor Arliss Howard. Independence native and Truman graduate. He is currently appearing in The Lost World. He told the students who taught him how to act. I was thinking about the first time that I saw Harry Truman. And uh, I was in the band, the marching band, at Holland Junior High School. I played the trombone. I couldn't hit seventh position. My arm wasn't long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I could hear it sitting down with my foot. Vital part of the enhancement of the arts and independence. They can move forward together now. <laughs> 